one of my favorite ones. It's Windows Virtual Memory Minimum Too Low. This is all about plumbing. I don't care about that. Why in the world are you telling me about that? This is one of my favorite new ones. This is in PowerPoint for the Mac now. Literally between keystrokes, this thing will pop up and it'll be up for two minutes at a time. You just have to sit, <laughs> wait for it to do that. This is also one of my new favorite pet peeves. This is the copy dialogue in Vista. It actually flashes a light in your eye about every 10 seconds, this stupid little lighthouse thing that's going on. And we are actually programmed to sense movement off to the side in your peripheral vision, which came in really handy when there might be a saber-toothed tiger in the bushes that you need to get away from. So handy, in fact, that you, your body is willing to accept hundreds of false positives just in case the, the 101th is a saber-toothed tiger that's about to eat you. The problem is any sort of little random motion off to the side will distract you. What's the best about this, I have to endure this now for 34 more minutes while this stupid thing is working. So I always just take this dialogue and move it off the edge of the screen so I don't have to see that stupid thing anymore. And this is one of my favorites. I had a friend who was doing a presentation on Windows, and he didn't realize that this popped up in the background, and his machine just restarted itself during his presentation. And so for about five minutes of his presentation, he was having to go, okay, this shadow puppet represents a transaction. So when you think about Windows in these terms, Windows is like a bored three-year-old, because it's always pestering you about stuff that you don't care about. You have unused icons on your desktop. Yeah, I know. Shut up. I put them there. Don't, why are you trying to interrupt my flow to tell me something I already know? That's actually one of the reasons, you know, it's hard to really pinpoint. You know, you hear all the Mac people talk about how much they love their computers, but it's hard to pinpoint. One of the things is the Mac is quiet. It doesn't do these stupid little random interruptions. Wireless network's available. I'm already plugged into a network. Shut up. Go away. Uh, it doesn't have all these little random distractions that are trying to pop up all over the place to try to pull you out of flow. So as a public service, if you are on Windows, here's how to kill balloon tips forever. There's a utility, a power tool you can download called Tweak UI that lets you turn off all those annoying little balloon pop-up tips that uh, keep popping up all over the place. Now, you can get rid of some of those things, but it's hard to get rid of others like the lighthouse copy dialogue and that kind of stuff. But there is a cool little utility you can download, a screen dimmer. And what a screen dimmer does is automatically makes your background fade to black after a set amount of time. So whatever application you're working in stays full color, but the rest of the desktop very slowly fades to black so you don't see anything outside the thing you're working on, which is really great for developers because that just helps that kind of flow tunnel vision. And as soon as you click away from it, all the other stuff snaps right back to full color, but it, it helps you ignore all those random distractions that are happening on your desktop. The one for Windows is called Jedi Concentrate. <laughs> and it's free. And the one for the Mac is called Doodim. So the trick in, is in terms of flow itself is the higher the level of concentration you can achieve and the longer you can stay there, the denser the ideas you have and the more productive you are and just the uh, crazy amount of stuff you can get done. Now that's all about flow, but here are some other focus techniques. And one of these is that search trumps navigation. I mentioned this a little bit when I was talking about acceleration, uh, but I'll formalize this a little bit now. All our hierarchies are too deep. The file system hierarchy is too deep. The package namespace hierarchy is too deep. Even documentation hierarchies are now too deep to be useful anymore. <coughs> what worked really well with 20 megabyte hard drives fails as we keep scaling up the amount of storage that we have. But fortunately, there are solutions to this problem in the form of desktop search. This is built into modern operating systems where it does an index of your hard drive so that you can find things really fast. But it's retrofittable in older ones. So Leopard and Vista both have that kind of index search built in. But even if you're on Windows XP, then you can retrofit it with Google Desktop Search. Now, a Google Desktop Search out of the box is not that useful to developers because it's searching in Word docs and Excel spreadsheets and that kind of stuff. But you can download a plugin for Google Desktop Search called Larry's Any Text File Indexer. And you can tell it, I want you to index these kinds of files. And that can be star.java, star.xml, whatever you use regularly, star.sql. 
And in fact, what I typically do on a developer workstation is turn off the Word and PowerPoint and Excel searching and Google Desktop search and turn on the files that I want to look for. This is a really handy thing. Here's an example of that. Once you've got Google Desktop search uh, configured and let it build its index the first time, then you just hit a hotkey and start typing the name of the thing that you want. You can then right click on the results and say open folder. I don't care how fast you are with a mouse, look at that hierarchy that this thing lived in. I don't care how fast you are with a mouse, you cannot get there faster than I just got there using desktop search. And what's nice about it is it will search in the contents of files. So if you know the name of a Java class, you just type in the class name, Google Desktop Search will find it instantly, and you create the association with your IDE and hit enter, and now you're editing that file. So it's a super fast way to ignore the hierarchy. You shouldn't get rid of the hierarchy because it has to be there because of requirements and language and other stuff. But anytime you're navigating to it, you should file hierarchy navigation with search. It's a much faster, more efficient way to get to those things. Here's another focus technique around, uh, a similar, in a similar vein, a rooted view. This is basically a stupid uh, Windows Explorer trick. But this actually works in more than just Windows. A, a rooted view is a specialized explorer view where uh, you only see the, the directory and its children that you care about, not the rest of the file system. This is really good for directory-based version control like CVS or Subversion or Git or something like that. A rooted view essentially becomes a project explorer. And I'll show you what one of these looks like in just a second. The way you create one of them is create a shortcut to an explorer instance with a command line that looks like this, where the last part is whatever you want your rooted view to point at. Once you do this, when you launch this shortcut, you get a rooted view like this. The actual path is this long, complicated path but the rooted view, I said I want it rooted on this folder, and now the only thing my explorer shows me is this directory and all of its children. I don't have to see all that noisy stuff of the other 200 gigabytes of files I have on my machine, and I'm working, when I'm working on this project, there's nowhere in here that I can click that's outside the scope of this project. So it's a really nice way to, for the projects that you work on, create a rooted view for them so that you basically have a, a specialized project explorer just for that project. This has no effect on any other explorers that you have running on your machine or any subsequent, that you, subsequent ones you create with like a, a Window E or something like that. It's just the ones that are launched by the shortcut. This is what it looks like in Windows. This is what it looks like on the Mac. Uh, if you drag a folder over to the left-hand dock area on the Mac, it creates a rooted view to that folder for you there as well. This also works on GNOME. On Linux, it has the same kind of left-hand dock thing that Finder has and you can create a rooted view in uh, GNOME the exact same way. Okay, my next topic is canonicality, which is really just a fancy way of saying keep things dry, as in don't repeat yourself. And I have a quote here from the Pragmatic Programmer book about dry that says, Dry says that every piece of system knowledge should have one authoritative, unambiguous representation. And that doesn't just mean source code. Obviously, you know you shouldn't copy and paste source code from one place to another. This means that everything, including database schemas and documentation, everything that you touch should have one and only one representation within your ecosystem. And uh, the example that I have of Dry comes from a project that I was working on, uh, and this is a really common dry violation that I would be willing to bet virtually every Java project in this room suffers from, and that is OR mapping. This is a classic dry violation because if you're using an OR mapper like Ibatis or Hibernate or something like that, you have a database schema, you have an XML configuration file, and you have a Java class, and you have information repeated across all three of those things and you always have to mentally remember to keep those things in sync or bad things will happen. 